Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I am here alone tonight. I'm going to spend the night in the car, uh, sleeping here and imaging from this spot. Uh, luckily, there is no wind tonight. It's amazing. Last time I came here, there was a crazy amount of wind. So I took a risk coming back here because it's so open, but there is no wind and I'm so happy. So I'm going to be imaging the Iris Nebula tonight. Uh, I came here a bit late. It's already dark outside, so I have to hurry up and set everything up. Um, so I already imaged uh, the Iris Nebula in the past, but I actually did not like how it turned out. It was taken from a bottle 2 zone, so a really dark site, but I just didn't like how the framing was and how, um, I guess my processing, I'm not sure, but I didn't like the image. So I'm going to shoot the Iris again tonight. I already spent one full night on it two nights ago uh, from the south uh, of here, but because I was south of the city, uh, my frames have pretty bad gradient in it, as you can see here, which is why I wanted to come north of the city today. So uh, I drove north about an hour and a half, and here the light pollution dome is going to be uh, out of the way, uh, completely outside of the uh, field of view of the Iris Nebula, because the Iris Nebula is to the north. So here we have a beautiful north uh, sky with completely, uh, you know, it's, it's completely dark, so it's just desert uh, to the north. So it should be a very good night for the Iris Nebula. And um, yeah, I have to hurry up and I'm going to set the telescope right now. And uh, yeah, let's, let's try to hurry up. The mount I am using tonight is a bit time consuming to set up, mostly because of the tripod itself. Once this was done, the sky had a bright red glow as the moon set, which looked so beautiful. So tonight I'm going to be using the 10 micron GM1000 HPS, which is by far the best mount I ever used in my life. I love this mount so much. My last time using the mount, uh, two days ago, I was uh, doing just guiding, no, you know, no crazy uh, model or anything, uh, just guiding, and I was at 0 0.22 uh, error, which is insane, my best record yet. So it's incredible. I hate when I'm late, uh, meaning like when you have to, to sell up in the dark, it's really not fun uh, because I feel like every second counts and I feel like every second is like, you know, one second wasted on the target, which is not fun. So I'm trying to be very fast here, and hopefully I don't make any mistake, but I still have to pull our line and then launch, I mean, frame and rotate the camera manually and all that. So not fun, but hopefully we'll still have plenty of data for the night. Uh, the telescope here is the Radian 75, which is, as of today, what I'm talking right now is a prototype version, uh, which is not out yet. But so far, I love this telescope, so you will see a video about it soon. Uh, and then the camera is the QHY600C, which is a full-frame color camera. I'm hearing some weird noise, so I'm kind of scared. I already had two jump scares, by the way, from reptiles and weird-looking insects, like right there. Look at that. Whatever that is, look at that. I don't know what it is, but it scares me. Let me show you. Is it a spider or not? Oh, horrible. Horrible. I can't, I can't. All right, I'm gonna finish this up really quick and then we can finally image. All right guys, so I'm finally about to start imaging. Uh, it's a bit late, sadly, but it's okay, no big deal. So as you can see, I'm now using Nina, no longer SGP. I got very tired of SGP. Um, I mean, once you try Nina, you really don't go back at all. Uh, Nina is really awesome, and uh, I'm definitely gonna use that from now on. And uh, are we starting up? We are officially taking the first frame now. We are 30 seconds in out of 10 minutes. Yeah, I will show you guys the first frame once we see it. And uh, I'm just going to relax now and eat. Uh, hopefully have a nice night without any wind or anything. The night was beautiful but hot. The Milky Way is always so impressive from a dark side and looked awesome through the camera lens. I couldn't sleep so I went to check on the guiding and it was at 0.58. There was some slight wind but I am still very pleased with 0.58. Here you can see what a single 10 minute shot looked like. I decided to take my small tracker out of the car and take full advantage of the Milky Way. It was already past midnight, so I didn't get much of it, but still got a nice time lapse. 
I also stacked a few of the frames and got a beautiful single image of the Milky Way, most likely for the last time, until next year. Good morning, it is now almost 5 a.m. The sun is about to rise behind me and before it does, I'm going to take some flats. Uh, and thanks Nina to the flats wizard, which is awesome. So uh, I'm going to hurry up and take some flats and then uh, I will be packing and going home. The night was actually horrible. It was extremely hot and so I had no choice but to sleep with the trunk open. Every hour or so, as I was about to finally fall asleep, I would hear some huge insect wings flap around and would make me jump scare. Anyway, at least the telescope had a great, successful night. Right before the sun peaked behind the mountains, I forced myself to take flats, which was so much easier to do in Nina than it is in SGP, thanks to the flats wizard. I take flats using a cheap drawing board that I've been using for years and it works just fine. It was then time to pack up and go. It always feels nice to be rewarded with a beautiful sunrise when imaging all night far from home. If there is one thing I cannot stand about desert dot roads, there is those things here. It's kind of hard to see, but see on the on the road there is a bunch of like st stripes or like streaks, whatever that's called, lines, and this is all over the place. Usually in most dirt roads, and I never know if it's man-made or if it's natural-made. So let me know. But it's so annoying because you're driving and then it's non-stop bouncing. And if you take a reflector here. Good luck with the collimation, because there is no way it's going to stay collimated. So, yeah, here we go for like 10 minutes of bouncing around like a turtle. I remember coming here once back when I had my Scion TC car, and it was a hell to drive through this. It took three times longer than it takes with a Jeep. Either way, I would go much slower if I had a reflector in the car, but here, eh, it doesn't matter too much. Alright guys, so I had some issues processing the Iris Nebula because of two reasons. One is the crazy micro-lensing I had uh, using the QHY600C. Uh, I think this would not be an issue if I was using a monochrome camera with LRGB filters, but in this case this lensing was insane. I made a video about how to remove this, so I was able to remove it and be happy with the result. And also the, the dust um, looks a bit yellow to me, orange. But I asked for feedback with some friends and they told me it looked fine, so uh, I didn't try to uh, remove any of the orangey colors. It looks slightly overprocessed in my opinion, but I, I still like it and uh, I'm glad for 15 hours uh, to have a, a beautiful picture compared to the first one from last time. So I'll see you guys next time and kill us guys. Thank you.